talked about the tangent line process. Now, with a tangent line problem, what you need to be very aware of is how we're using this limit process. And we're actually going to get more into the, the limit process as the chapter uh, continues. But uh, the limit process that you need to know now is when we were using the tangent line problem, what we did is we basically moved some arbitrary point and we moved it closer and closer to the point that we were going to. So it kind of went just like this. So we took some point and we moved it along our line till we got closer and closer. And the closer that we got to that point four comma two, the more accurate our secant line slope was to where we could use it to approximate the actual value of our slope. So our X's approached a specific number. So the X's start here, it was at zero, and then we moved it along our line until we got closer and closer to that value of four. Well, it's a little bit different in the area problem, but similar type concept. So in the tangent line problem, you saw how the limit process can be applied uh, to the slope of a line uh, to find the slope of a general curve. The second cl uh, classic problem in calculus is finding the area of a plane region that is bounded by the graphs of functions. This problem can be solved with a limit process. In this case, the limit process is applied to the area of a rectangle to find the area of a general region. So we have found out uh, area very often, obviously in geometry, uh, you know how to find the area of a rectangle, of a triangle, of a circle, all those fun things. Here it's a little bit different. Uh, so as a simple example, considering the region bounded by the graph of the function, y is equal to f of x. So as you can see, it is an unknown function for us. I should not have moved that, but that's okay. The x-axis and the vertical lines x equal to a and x equal to b. So here's our little graph, and as you can see, the area we're talking about is this pink area that's between, that's underneath our graph, y is equal to f of x, the x-axis, and the line x equal to a and x equal to b. So therefore, it's bounded by all those, and it's that area underneath. Now, unfortunately, we do not know a formula that will give us that area. So what we're going to have to do is use a little bit of the limit process. So we're going to approximate the area uh, of the region with several rectangular regions. So what we're doing now in terms of using our uh, approximation is to use four rectangles. As you can see, right now we have taken the distance from A to B, and we divide it into four. So each of these rectangles is of equal width. And we're going to use that uh, to help us calculate the area. So what you would do is you would need to say, okay, well, if this is A, then this point right here uh, is going to be F A comma F of A. So even though we don't know our function F of X, uh, the value here is going to be F of A. So whatever the, val the function value is, uh, when X is equal to A, will be our Y value. And, of course, our width is going to be uh, a given. It's the total distance divided by 4. And then the height of this rectangle is whatever our function value uh, at A would be. And then, of course, we know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. So, as you can see, we're going to keep going on. So, here's the next little value we would use. And then its Y value is going to be here. Well, as you can see, uh, in our first little rectangle, there was an under approximation. So the area represented by this rectangle is less than the area under the curve, where it's a little bit harder to identify in the next one because here is an under approximation, but then over here in this corner is an over approximation. And the next rectangle, same thing. Now we have an over approximation of the area under the curve. And then under again in our last little rectangle there. But uh, what it's going to do is going to give us an approximated area. Well, as you can see, it's probably going to be a little bit off it's probably going to be less than the actual area under the graph. So what we can do is we can approximate, we can increase the number of rectangles. And as the number of rectangles increase, what it's going to do, it's going to give us a better representation of the area under the curve. So now using 8, you can see that um, we have a little bit less of an under approximation. And of course, that would balance out a little bit with some of these over approximations. But the limit process is such that as we continue to increase the number of rectangles that we use, suddenly this is going to give us a more accurate representation of the area under our curve. So we'll get into this more in detail later on, and it's going to help us uh, with our integration later.